In today's wood fired workshop we're going to be making crunchy, light, fluffy, crispy bread. Stick around and we'll show you how we made it. Welcome to Wood Fired Workshop at Manor from Devon Cooking School. In this workshop we're going to be talking about bread and this is one of the breads that I make on a regular basis. So I start with a bowl of flour. So 600 grams of flour, 12 grams of salt, 2% of the weight of flour. That's the yeast which is the interesting bit. So I use an instant yeast. I'm using this Dove's Farm uh, instant yeast. So it's a quarter of a teaspoon. And we're using such a tiny amount because it's gonna have such a long time to ferment. And then I'm gonna add water, and this water is just at room temperature. So I'm using 420 grams of water, which is 70% of the weight of flour. And then I mix it all up quickly with the dough scraper to get all the flour nice and wet. So now I'm going to do nothing except put a top over the dough. I'm going to leave that for 30 to 60 minutes, depending on what I'm doing around the house. It doesn't really matter. And that's going to allow the bread to absorb moisture or allow the flour to absorb moisture and to allow the proteins in the bread to start forming gluten uh, without me doing any kneading. And when I come back to it in an hour or so, I can do a tiny bit of kneading and the bread is ready. That's it. And now I leave this overnight in a cool place, somewhere where the yeast is not going to get too active but nevertheless, the bread is still developing flavor and character. When I come back to it the next day, it looks like this. So it's now risen, it's got rather bubbly, the yeast have multiplied, and it is ready for me to move on to the next stage. So now they're ready for their final shaping before they go into the oven. So a little bit of semolina. And I'm gonna carefully lift each one onto the semolina. And then first thing is to tease it out lengthways and then bring one end two thirds of the way over, the other end over the top and now make a little dink in there, roll the end over, and as I roll it over, I sort of pull it back towards me to create a little bit of tension in the dough. So each time, roll it over, pull it back towards me, roll it over, pull it back towards and me. And now we've got this final seam where I bring it over and just bring that towards me and make sure that that final seam is not gonna come apart. Lift the dough and roll over the top and then press down and pull back towards me and as I pull back you can see how that tightens. My thumbs play no part in it because I really don't want to drag my thumbs over the outside of this crust which would weaken it and make marks in it and I make sure that that final seam is bomb proof. So whilst those partly shaped loaves rest for a few minutes I'm going to set this up as a couche cloth and a couche cloth is uh, just a neat way of keeping these breads until they're ready to go in the oven so I've got here a piece of linen into the weft of the linen I've rubbed lots and lots of flour which keeps it nice and non-stick and then I scatter semolina over that and the breads are going to sit in here with a ruche between each one and that means that they stay nice and warm. It also means that the bread is supported. For the final part of this shaping I'm going to extend the loaves a little 
stretch them out in other words and for this I don't want any semolina on the table so I place it on the table seam side up and then lightly start start it rolling up and down the table so with no downward pressure because it's moving I don't need semolina on the table otherwise it would skate around on top and then with it moving nicely up and down the table I start to pull a little bit of pressure and stretch the dough out with both hands and then once I get it out to the length that I want I'm just going to tip my hands ever so slightly to put a little bit more pressure on the ends of the dough and that will give them a little point the seam goes on the bottom a little bit of semolina sprinkled on top bring that first whoosh up and when the final bread goes in semolina on top of them all to create a nice dry outside which will go a lovely golden color and give them some nice crispness and then I bring the couche cloth over the top so they're nice and snug and to give this one on the end some support so now it really depends on the temperature of the dough and the temperature of the day how long these take to rise I usually find 30 maybe 40 minutes in winter will be sufficient we want a nice hot oven to bake these breads in 250 260 degrees centigrade and either the oven fully heated up or mostly heated up with a little bit of embers then if I was down the garden using the stainless steel oven my alpha oven I'd certainly have a bed of embers on the side and I'd make sure that the floor was nice and hot so I'd be waiting for a fire to die down and then putting the bread straight into the and oven. now if we have a little look here and you can see that these bre breads have risen a little bit not massively because we didn't knock them back remember to start with. they've got nice and soft but they've still got a little bit of spring left in them now I want them to cook directly on the floor of the oven so they get nice heat straight to the bottom but rather than trying to put them in individually the easier way of doing it is to put them all onto a sheet of silicon and now I'm going to slash the loaves and that slashing is going to allow the pressure to be released so I've got a very sharp knife here and I just sort of pinch the end very lightly and almost down the center of the bread I sweep the knife so I'm cutting through the crust which will let it expand now I can lift the whole piece of silicon in one so I don't want them to be right next to the fire and on with the door we're going to cook them for about 20 minutes in total but there's more heat at the back of the oven than at the front because we've got the door at the front that means there's always a cool spot there and we've got more heat on one side of the oven where we've got a bed of embers than on the other so they will need a turn around so after 10 minutes we're going to spin, spin the breads around the batons have had 10 minutes and with the silicon I can slide that in bring it out spin the whole lot around and you can see they've risen really nicely so back in door on again for another 10 minutes the batons are coming out of the oven any second but before they do just an opportunity to say thank you for watching this video if you've enjoyed it please give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've got any questions about this, any questions about bread making, any questions about wood-fired ovens, put them in the comments below and we will respond to you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Let's have a look at those breads. So there we are, 20 minutes cooking. They are crisp. They are risen. They are lovely and light. They're a beautiful color. Anytime you want a nice crusty bread, this is the one to go for, nice and simple, and a success every time.